You've been hired as a Juice TV viewer, so take a stroll down this career path as we look at the unusual occupations on offer. Whip yourself into shape for our first fiery job as Milan chats with Walter Whip. Then draw your attention to job number two as Shania finds out about a medical illustrator. And to wrap up the workday, we head to Oz Comic Con to chat to the people behind your favourite television characters. My name is Molly and I'm currently being interviewed for Juice TV. So you want to be a host, do you? Yes. Do you like fun? Yes. Do you like excitement? Yes. Are you up to date on strange and unusual things? Yes. Oh, congratulations, Molly. We'd like to offer you the job. <laughs> Hi, my name is Molly and I have the job of being your Juice TV host. Coming up on the show, we're going to meet a medical illustrator. Right now, I have the cracking job of being your host, but I know a job that's even more cracking. Hi, I'm Milan, not going near that whip. For this story, that's my last name. Here's how I got the name. I'm not going near that whip. Today, I'm joined by Walter Whip. He got his name like this. Before Walter Whip whips up a show, let's whip out to the green for a chat. Whip! I mean what? Read that wrong. Where did your name come from? My name, so Walter Whip and the Flames. Okay. My real name is Walter, so it's Walter Le Sueff, which is French. And I had to come up with a stage name, so we came up with Walter Whip. How did you learn how to use a whip? Um, I actually bought my first whip when I was about 10 years old. Well, so, that's young. Yeah, <laughs> I started cracking whips um, in my own backyard in Brisbane oh. when I was 10. And then I started, I had a real passion for um, the country and started going out to the Australian Woolshed, which is not open anymore. Oh. But I used to go out there and then a, a New Zealand chappie out there taught me how to crack a whip a few different ways. Oh. And everything I do, or the rest that I do today, were pretty much self-taught. How did you get so talented with your wit? Um, I guess it's just practice and I mean, you know, like when I was growing up, I used to hit myself in the face, I've had wow. a few blood noses. That would have hurt. <laughs> yeah. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm okay nowadays. Oh, that's good. I, uh, I crack whips that are on fire too, so I've had a couple of burns. Ooh. So, Ooh. you know, if you're going to play with fire, you do get burnt occasionally as well, so it's not a good idea unless you know what you're doing. What's the craziest stunts that you do with the whip? I've got a couple of crazy stunts. I do a stunt where I actually run through a big, um, it's a smiley face on fire. So it's like a burning ring of fire it started as originally and now our uh, trademark stunt is a big smiley face and I run through that cracking two whips on fire. Oh. So my shirt's even caught on, on fire doing that stunt but it's all designed to be ripped off if I have to. And I cut a rose out of these ladies' mouth with a whip that's on fire. It travels past their face at about 420 metres per second. Final question, do you <laughs> like normal or whipped cream? <laughs> I'd really go the whipped cream. I'm not allowed whipped cream, so normal for me. Oh really? Like gluten free, because it makes sense. That's fair enough. Yeah. You can whip, but can you nay nay? <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when we get off and <laughs> when we do a show, everyone thinks we should use that song. But yeah, now we've got the little pony here today, so he'll, he'll probably, he might put on a bit of a nay nay for you while we uh, oh. <laughs> do a bit of a whip show. <laughs> a pony joke. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works. <laughs> whip. Take Walter, add whip, and you saw some, and things really get cracking. But he 
should also go by a different name. Walter his pony is a really cool also. Lauren, who do we have here? This is Chucky. What type of animal is Chucky? Chucky is what you call a miniature horse. So he's just like a big horse, but smaller. That's so cute. What is Chucky doing here today? Uh, we've brought him along to have a little hello to everyone and hopefully he can make some new friends. Hi, Lauren, is your mini pony hungry? <laughs> he's always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Me, same. Does, do you mind if I give him a carrot? You are more than welcome to, yes. Does he bite? No, you just got to make sure you don't stick your fingers in there. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like that. Perfect. And he'll bite off the end of it. I just let go, basically. Oh. <laughs> he put the whole thing in his mouth. <laughs> I'm here with Nikki. What your role in the show? So I hold the roses out and Walter Whip, he cuts them off with a whip. Oh my That's on fire. Goodness. That's crazy. <laughs> do you ever get nervous doing the stunts? Yeah, sometimes I do, but I'm pretty used to it now. Would you do anything like that? No. No? I would be too scared to. <laughs> You know what? After today, I think he should change his name to Walter. He was amazing. And speaking of name changes, this was Milan. This is so awesome, and that's a wrap. Bye! <laughs> Great job. Um, I hate to admit, but I've never actually whipped before, but embarrassing enough, I have no need. That song's a classic, but not my favourite. But let's find out what is. Ideal for the role of Juice TV host is 15-year-old Molly. She writes poetry, Irish dances, and owns seven donkeys. My favourite hobby is watching movies because it allows me to escape to another reality. When it comes to favourite movies, I have heaps, but one of my favourites is The Breakfast Club. It's a favourite because it was the first movie I saw where I actually related to the characters. My favourite saying is, life is 10% what happens and 90% how you respond to it. If I could have anyone come to my birthday party, it would be Kristen Stewart because she's passionate about everything she does and her values and views, and she's in a lot of movies I like. My proudest moment was saying a poem that I wrote to my entire grade. I could do New Zealand accent. My favorite song is Literally Anything by Lana Del Rey. My best dance move is I used to do Irish dancing so I can do some cool kicks and things. If I could have any job in the world, I hope it would be acting, which would lead to directing, because I want to direct some psychological thrillers. One job I've heard about, but don't know much about, is a medical illustrator. Hi, I'm Shania. I can't really move right now, because I'm getting my portrait drawn. All right, I think I'm done. What do you think? Actually, it's, uh, it's got a lot of heart. Well, it's actually your liver. Madeline Flynn is a medical illustrator. You may not know what that is, but you would have definitely seen her work, featuring subjects we definitely don't see every day. Madeline, what is a medical illustrator? Well, a medical illustrator is someone who does drawings for doctors and scientists. So we draw everything that makes you alive, your cells, your organs, uh, just everything biological. What are your illustrations used for? Uh, well, for the scientists, it's for their academic papers for other scientists. And for doctors, it's more for the patients to understand what's happening to them. How long do you work for in a day? Oh, that's a good question. If I'm doing a big illustration, it could take me about two weeks, and the smaller ones, about a week. Where would people see your work? 
Uh, well, um, in medical journals, in textbooks for everybody, and also sometimes in ads on TV or in magazines. Do you have a favorite illustration? Uh, I have a lot because I do new ones every week, but my most favorite one from this year is of a virus called cytomegalovirus. That's the pink one. Um, the other cells are, can you guess what the other cells are? <laughs> uh, they're called T cells, and they're the main cells in your immune system that attack, um, well, everything from viruses to cancer. You do some strange stuff. How do you know what these things look like? That is such a great question. In fact, I get that with every interview I do. Um, sometimes I go up to the labs where the scientists are and they let me look through the microscope so I can actually see the real thing. Um, other times it's a little harder and I actually have to go on Google Images or on the internet and just try to find examples of what it looks like. These drawings are very technical. Do you always just use pen and paper? Um, actually, no. Uh, I like using pen and paper in the beginning, but sometimes I put it into the computer and turn it into a 3D object. I love making things in 3D. And it's a whole other uh, kind of artwork. And it's, it's just so much fun. Can anyone listening out there have a job like yours? Uh, absolutely. There's only four of us here in Australia, so there's lots of room for more. And I actually started when I was about 13 years old. So you're not too young to start. Um, if you have a pen and paper, a pencil and paper, just get drawing everything you can from your science class or your biology class, and that's how I started. Do you like to draw? I love to draw. Oh, this will be interesting, okay. Uh, part of my job is drawing beautiful things. But the other part of my job is figuring out solutions and how to, how can I put it, problem solving. Like, how do I make things look the way they're supposed to and what's the process behind it all? Does this include math? If so, no thanks. <laughs> I'm happy to say there is no math whatsoever. <laughs> <sighs> So I'm going to put these pens down here, and there's all different colors. And I'm going to explain a scenario to you. And I, I'm not going to judge your artistic ability, because we only have a few minutes to do it. But I want to see what solution you come up with for this scenario. <laughs> the scenario is, there is one cell talking to some other cells, OK? Blobs are fine for the cells. It doesn't have to be too detailed, just a cell. So a cell is talking to some other cells. And as it's talking to them, it's turning some cells on and switching some cells off. So it's killing some cells, and then it's also talking to some cells and saying, oh, hi, you're a good neighbor. So I'd like you to give this a go. It's, this is what I do every day when the scientists come to see me. They say, okay, this is what I want you to draw, and then I have to come up with a solution. No, 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 no. This is looking great so far. <laughs> it's so cute, I love it. <laughs> I've done this big pink blob thing, and I've got a pointing finger pointing to the red things that are saying I'm dying and he's telling it to die. He's saying, you die! And, and the, the green ones are saying hi and then he says hi. That is fantastic. I love it. So I will show you what I drew, which is this. And what you've done, so my, my cell, which is your pink cell, looks like this. That's just the cell I was drawing. However, have a look at the cells you've drawn here. They look very similar to these, don't they? Yes. That is amazing. Would you mind doing that portrait of me another go? Oh, sure, sure. I'd love to. OK, all done. Sorry, I couldn't resist. You have such good bone structure. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline, for coming in today. I'm Shania. Bye. Time for my sleep now.
want you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. I'm a big fan of acting and hope one day I get to do it. I would like to do it because you get to walk in someone else's shoes. Now, for voice actors, they don't actually have to walk in other people's shoes because they can just use their voices. Oz Comic Con is all about pop culture. We're talking movies, TV, anime and comics. Mackenzie was lucky enough to catch up with some special guest pop culture icons before they hit the con. So we are here now with Maggie and Hal and just have... Can you give us a clue of what type of actors and performers you are? So um, I do voices on The Simpsons. I created a lot of the, the voices for the American Simpsons, like the first of it all. Um, so I do Helen Lovejoy, Reverend Lovejoy's wife, the Gothby wife of the minister. Well, Marge Simpson, what are you doing with the matters not your husband? I just thought I'd come over and say hello. And I do Miss Hobo's Lisa's teacher, the one with Lyme disease. And off with you, boys, friends. I did Mod Flanders, who's the next door neighbor who has the two kids, Tad and Rod. And then I do the Van Van Houten, who's Milhouse's mother. I also got to do Sherry Bobbins, which is a takeoff from Mary. Poppins, which was a blast to do. I don't know if you have ever seen it, but I was on the Transformers. Me snarl, Dinobot! As well as Shrapnel, the Insecticon. <laughs> if you're a fan of Warner Brothers. Oh boy, I'm Marvin the Martian, and I would love to destroy this planet. Really? It's that Donald Trump factor. You know what I mean. And also, if you're a big fan of the Muppets... Miss Piggy! <laughs> kissy, kissy! And guns all the great! Look at this! Skin! <laughs> it bends! Isn't that wild? These... Oh boy, and of course, Kermit the Frog, your roving Sesame Street reporter, reporting right here, right now, live with you! <laughs> That's great! And actually, cartoon voices are fun to do because it doesn't matter how old you are. So I can do a little boy if I want to, or I can do an old woman, you know, that that's good. We like to do as much as we can, as often as we can, to uh, make people smile. Well, you're sure making me smile. Oh, well, well, that's <laughs> lovely. I'm madly in love with your hair. And you said your mom did your hair and it's got the sparkles on it. And if I could make my hair longer and have sparkles, I would be doing that too. It's gorgeous. Oh, I love sparkles. Oh, yeah. But I don't think there are enough sparkles in the world. Well, actually, your smile is very sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you both um, come up with a voice for characters? Well, sometimes um, in The Simpsons, for instance, they have characters that have already been established, but we still didn't know what they looked like. So um, there was Helen Lovejoy, who would be married to Reverend Lovejoy. So I had to figure out what kind of character that would be. And I thought she was a type of woman that would smile all the time, but she would not be the nicest person. And then Maude Flanders seemed like she would be really nice because she's married to Ned Flanders. But I do like that when we do the show, like when I do Maude Flanders, and I go, oh, Nettie. And at one time, I just, the, the animators were watching me go, oh, Nettie. And when they saw me do that, then all of a sudden my character went like this. And I thought, oh, wow, my shoulders went up just like the character. So it was really fun. Sometimes, well, like with Miss Piggy and Marvin the Martian and characters like that, I have to do a vocal match of the people that originally created the character. But the fun part is, yes, when we create our own voices. Um, sometimes we get to look at the picture. Sometimes we don't. Uh, sometimes you go contrary, like if it's a great big character, you might go, Oh boy, this is going to be great. I'm a great big guy. And sometimes you have a little guy and you go, I'm going to be great because I'm a great big guy in my own head. <laughs> Do you have any characters that, that 
Oh, sorry. Any characters that you've drawn that we could look at? I do have a couple. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so this one is scare, scare some Sid. Oh, I love that his eyes popping out. Ah! You know, I could make him like, really like this because he's like, ah, all the time. You know, give him a little bit of a thick tongue. Or I could just go, ooh, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> ah! This is Tootie Magooey. Tootie Magooey? Ah. Tui Magui. Well, I think Tui Magui would kind of sound like this because um, I, I, you know, I got the kind of a smile, and uh, for uh, maybe Tui Magui just has like a little tiny voice. Where's it go, uh, Tui? Uh, 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 Magui. I get him kind of a snotty nose. <laughs> you can be talking like this <laughs> because he's got that smile, but he's also got that nose. And then I have Buffing Bill. Oh my gosh, this is the greatest character ever. Look at this character. <laughs> I don't know what is going to happen to anybody, but I have a feeling it is going to happen to me. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been punch drunk a little bit. I've been knocked around quite a bit. So, I, you know, I got the googly eyes and uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. What do you think? Thanks so much for being on the show. Um, it was really great having you. Oh my gosh, well you are a goddess, I love it, and we are so happy to be here and so happy to be with you. I have to tell you, darling, it's been a privilege. You are such a genuine gem. The way you light up the room, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> we adore you. <laughs> there, that's out in the open. <laughs> Thanks, Mackenzie. My first day as Juice TV host has been brilliant. Because I'm a big movie buff, I want to finish the show in an iconic movie fashion. At the end of The Breakfast Club, the character Bender walks straight out of school and throws his fist up in the air. Until I catch you again, I'm Molly. Bye. Don't, don't. Um, I have an I have a... <laughs> hey, I'm Shana... <laughs> <laughs> Are you freaked out? <laughs> At the end of The Breakfast Club, Bender, the character, throws his fist up in the air, and, yeah, that's... <laughs> well, it's, uh, got a lot of heart. Well, it's actually your liver. <laughs> Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode. Let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.